Okay, so I've got this terrain here, which is a nice little snowy terrain. Uh, I've got some little breakout areas of rock versus snow. And in order to do this, there are a few different techniques that had to be employed. So first off, in order to get, you know, these sort of chunky bits, these big rocks kind of sticking out, um, it's a very simple method. It's something that I've done um, a number of times before. Uh, I've been probably doing this for a few years, actually. But um, if, if we come in for, uh, actually, let's just start right here. So drift noise, just because this is 1.3, I'm adding it, but it really isn't necessary. In fact, most of these can be done with um, the existing version of, uh, of Gaia. You don't have to do the bleeding edge. This was just for fun to see what I would get out of it. So the drift noise here, I just changed uh, its um, uh, undulation and I believe it's uh, one of its directions in order to get it to cross each other. But here we have sort of like a normal Voronoi, which is my base shape. When you're trying to make any kind of terrain, um, any kind of design really, uh, the rules are big, medium, small, right? You have this um, sort of combination of big, medium, small shapes that usually make something interesting. We see it all the time throughout nature and uh, some of the best designs will, will work this way, be it on a character, uh, an outfit, a, a prop, etc. So if you keep that idea in mind when you're putting something together, it, it can be fairly straightforward to say, okay, well, I've got big and small, but I'm missing sort of medium things in there. And so drift noise could provide some of those medium elements. And so we start to get some of that in there, but I felt like it wasn't quite enough. I wanted something very chunky. And so I went another step by taking different sized Voronoi. So I've got my medium Voronoi here and my small Voronoi here and combining them together. And again, in very specific balance, right? Um, we wanted to add these together. Um, it's just an add. Whereas here our, um, our add is also the same. And then we come here to this add, and now it's no longer 100%. What we're looking for is a really rocky sort of terrain. So you can see the shape that's coming off of this. So this is tweaking it to your own sensibilities, you know, whatever you like. Over here, I've got some Perlin. And then we go ahead and we do a blur to that. And then we do a difference. And here we have a lot of surface noise. Over here, we have some Voronoi, really spiky. We got some more Voronoi. And these ones are not spiky. These ones are flat shapes. And we combine those and um, let's, let's reveal this a little bit better. I'm just going to stick a constant on there and lower it and lower it so you can get an idea what's here. So this is sort of like a shattered rock appearance by combining those together. So I'm taking my really broken up noise, my shattered rock look, and I'm combining them together. And in that blend, we can see some shattered, broken, crumbly rock. So I'm gonna take that shattered, broken, crumbly rock and add it to my surface. So now I've got big, medium, and small shapes, definitely. And the small shapes have a lot of detail, right? That's coming from here. So over here, we've got our big shapes, then our medium shapes, and then our really small shapes, and lots of detail. So from here, it's really about um, trying to refine the shape for me. And this in-between stage here, I didn't absolutely need um, it doesn't do a ton, so this is not absolutely something that you would have to do, but it was experimentation. So um, in another video, I mentioned that you could use things like uh, Stratify to help you get some information on here. And I thought this was really interesting, the way that it worked by 
doing a stratify in this kind of shape, and then doing the blur and difference to extract that surface detail. And it has a really kind of cool look to it. So maybe there's a purpose for it, which is the reason why I left it in here, because I knew I was going to do a breakdown. And then if I try and do a shadow to this, um, it gives me some irregularity. Now, what this is doing in my particular case, and the only reason why it is sort of valuable, is that um, with this, uh, as I put it back onto the surface, if we come over here and we look both here and over here, and it's adding something additional to these flat surfaces. So I did another breakdown video of another surface just a little while ago that talks about ways that you can accomplish this on a greater scale to add a lot more detail to these regions. And those were based off things that I, I was uh, practicing in here. So by having that um, shatter node in there, which again is not always absolutely necessary, uh, it ensures that detail is going here and here, but if you look at this region, it's not. And contrast is a big part of creating something visually real, visually interesting, because not everything is exactly the same. And so having some areas that have a lot more micro details and others that may be a bit more smooth helps uh, break up that surface in other ways. So now it's time to add the snow. And the snow I know is going to come in here and it's going to break apart uh, the contrast of really rocky, blocky shapes to sort of smoother regions. So my first pass of snow was meant exclusively for that purpose. It was meant just to go ahead and again, that idea of big, medium, small, we're doing that with the snow here. We're breaking up big chunks. And I'm going to break that up even further with a medium. So this is just changing my, my um, scale between the two of them. This one is using like a very small train scale of verticality. This one's using the essential like default settings, not really doing much more. And then taking that information that I'm getting from this. So if we look here, we can see that we're reading in an erosion that is reading the snow mask and the actual shape train. So we're using that erosion as precipitation, right, for the area input. And that area input is gonna ensure that I'm only eroding where snow happens. I don't wanna break up all my lovely rock structures that I spend all the time producing. I wanna add, you know, this erosion into the snow. This is gonna give me little flow areas here and whatnot. And often the default settings are always gonna be a little bit too much. They're gonna be, you know, uh, excessive, but I know already that I'm going to add more snow to this. And what that's going to do is it's going to fill in some of these harsher gaps. So these harsher gaps will be reduced by additional snowfall passes. So what have we done? We've done our big, we've done our medium. So what's next? We're going for small. So in this particular case, playing with the scale, uh, I increased the train scale quite a bit and the verticality and um, I've got uh, more focus on the flows. And really, again, as I mentioned, one of the things I wanted to do was to kind of start filling in some of those gaps. So that was an actual goal for me. We then go to this. This is a different kind of small. So this one, again, train scale all the way up, but not playing with verticality. And this was to try and get the little bits on the tops all throughout here. So moving from this point, this is my base shape. This is a shape that I'm going to be using moving forward. But after this, I need to start working with texture. So a lot of this is going to be going in and combining these different snow passes, these different snow masks, in order to create an interesting sort of snow pass onto this train. So first off, I went ahead and did a slope uh, for the actual train here to get some of the smaller 
little ridges that are in there. I'm combining that with this pass. And then I'm using shatter because those lines, they're interesting, but there's too many of them. Remember that idea of too much regularity where everything this is, is the same is going to feel wrong. So um, even though I used it to fill in some gaps, which is going to be fine for some of those rock surfaces, it's not fine for my texture. And then I'm kind of going to do a height, which I'm basically using kind of like a contrast. So I'm playing with the values until I get some breakup of some snow that I like. So again, I'm coming from this to this. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to combine it with another snow pass that we have here. And now we have all these little broken stems. Some of them are coming up, some of them are not, some of them broke in the middle, right? It's all over the place, which is what the small is really supposed to do. Uh, coming off some of these other ones, we've got a uh, flow here, which I've taken and shattered, again, to break it up and kind of massage it a little bit. I'm going to be using this for uh, other textual purposes. Uh, for fun, I thought, let's go ahead and try something with stacks and see what that does. Um, and it gave me more coverage, which was neat. So I still got a lot of these lines and whatnot. And then I figured just to break that up again, we'll just go with shatter once more. And that gave me an interesting, nice little pattern. And then we've got some lovely purlin. We'll do that, combine these together. And I got a lot of little detail. So not all the color information is coming from the terrain. So that's going to go pass in and we're going to give one sat matte pass that has lots of contrast. We've got some medium, some darks, and some lights. Next one is just a straight up soil. So again, remember every time that you add something unique, you want to bring back something that's going to marry it to the train again. So we're taking this soil and then we're combining it with this other shattered one, which is also coming from the train information. And then we're putting that into another color pass where it's uh, dealing with sort of lights versus darks. And I chose something that had lots of variation in it. So that gave me lots of granular detail all throughout there, but really supported that form. So then combining the two of these, we end up with something like this. So it's not just that, it's not just that, it's a combination of the two. Coming back through, I got a sat map. I wanted lines kind of going across, but obviously I don't want it like this. And so here I'm going to use color information, this variation that we get here, and I'm going to do an RGB split, which is going to break out a color channel, and I'm going to shatter that. And then of course I'm going to displace that get a variation. And I'm going to take this soil that we did here from the, the Perlin noise and bring it down here with a little shatter to break it up. It didn't break it up that much, but it did something anyways. And uh, it just gives us a bit more variation. So now we have variation based on these sort of um, almost like strata lines. So bringing that in, I've got some warm versus cold. So there's lots of high contrast details in there. Just lots of variation. So now we're going from this to this. Now doing a uh, desaturation of the entire thing. Um, and bringing it more into the blue range. So I like warm versus cold, right? I like to bring them together. So there's our cold version. And in this time, I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm using a very broad Perlin noise to break up the two. So it's not super intense, but you can see that it does blend the two of them. And so we get some irregularity, some saturated warm areas. <clears throat> 
sorry, losing my voice, some uh, warm, warmer, slightly more saturated areas and some very desaturated areas. Coming down here, taking some very blocky Voronoi, I'm gonna use this to give me some more break up to the surface. So if I do a height and grab one section, you can see some lighter areas and then a different section of that same pass. A little shatter to soften it a bit. We're doing two things. Number one, I'm doing some darkening by using a subtract in a small amount. So you can see that I'm adding some darker patches and then doing the same thing, but this time adding it in using screen. And that's adding some lighter patches. Of course, I'm not gonna be keeping all of this, so I don't really need to worry about all this lower region, but if I did need to start breaking it up, I would look at you know trying to work uh, texture in different ways to get some different looks to down here. But as it stands, um, I'm looking to keep mainly just these top regions. So that's enough variation for them. So coming across here, uh, I'm combining the snow off my final base and the snow over here. Using a Perlin noise, which I have modified using um, levels and equalize. I get this breakup and then just using a height again, I get to choose how much of those original shapes I want. So again, combining different kinds of passes of snow, different kinds of elements of, of these, uh, we get it all together and we get our final piece. So hopefully that's given you some insight on ways that you can add more detail to surfaces, ways that you can texture them a little bit further, adding good snow flows without really having to worry about them getting too deep and uh, create something somewhat believable. That's it for this video.